we're talking about lesson 3.5, uh, we have been talking about our rocket launch. And in our rocket launch, we had three different launches. On the first day, our rocket was about five centimeters away from the launch pad, and we did not get to the 100 meters per second that we were looking for in order to have a good launch. So the next day, we moved the rocket a little bit closer, and we moved it about four centimeters away, and then when we launched it, we still did not go 100 meters per second. So we said, okay, well, let's just move it one more centimeter forward, and that should work. But it didn't. In fact, it overworked. It went to 120 meters per second. So over the past couple of days, the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about why is it that the rocket act differently after each launch. And we've been looking at magnets, we've been looking at repulsion, we've been looking about those kinds of things. What do you want to say? Uh, because they stopped the magnet from repulsing. So you just think it was because for some random reason the magnet was just stronger on Wednesday? So you, so the magnet just woke up that morning and went, you know what? I'm going to be stronger today. Okay, what do you think? Yes, ma'am. You want to disagree with that? Okay, what do you want to say? Okay, so when you say energy, what kind of energy are we talking about here? What, what's the type of energy we've been talking about in this unit? Potential and kinetic. P potential and kinetic. So as I move the rocket closer to the launch pad, I'm increasing my what? Potential, potential energy. Now, potential energy is stored energy. It's energy that wants to do something, okay? So if I give Chad back here a whole bunch of candy, okay? What's a Chad eventually going to do after he eats all that candy? Get hyper. Get very hyper. Get extremely crazy. Start bouncing off the wall. Start talking. Start hopping. Okay? Potential energy is the same way. Potential energy is the sugar. It's stored energy. Once that energy is in him, it's going to be con converted over to kinetic energy that's going to make him hyper and start bouncing off the walls. So in our experiment that we've been looking at with this rocket, if the rocket's far away from the launch pad, it has high or low potential energy? Mm. Low potential energy, okay? It doesn't have the potential to do much, which is why we only got about 80 meters per second on our launch speed. Then we moved it a little bit closer. By moving it closer, we increased the potential energy. And when we increased the potential energy, it went 90 meters per second. We're like, okay, we got this. So I'm gonna move it one meter closer expecting to get my 100 meters per second that I'm expecting, but I don't get 100 meters per second, I get 120 meters per second, I've increased my potential energy even more. And then we started talking about repulsion, okay? Now with magnets, if I take a north and a south magnet, they're going to hit each other. I've seen some really cool videos on TikTok where this guy has like a super powerful magnet, and when they hit each other, they make sparks go everywhere, because they're very, very strong magnets, okay? Now, to, if I take a north and a south, they'll attract, they'll run into each other. But if I do opposites, opposites do what? Repel. Repel, okay? Opposites repel, which is how we're doing our rocket launch. We're sending a repelling magnet. We'll probably have like a north on the launch pad, a north on the rocket, and when we let the rocket go, the potential energy turns into kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is going to launch that rocket up. But... That's what we've been talking about. Now, where we're going to move, where we're going to move to today, is we're going to start talking about electromagnets. Okay? Electromagnets are different from just regular magnets. Right? Regular magnets, I can go out and find them in Earth very easily, find a magnetic rock, and boom, it's a magnet. When I say the word electromagnet, what do you think of? Magnets made of static electricity, okay? What do you what 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 do you think of when I say electromagnet? Um, I don't know. Well let, let's let's just look at this word real quick. And it's okay to say I don't know. Okay? We know what a magnet is, right? Let's look at this word right here. This is called the prefix. Electro. Okay, I'm not talking about the bad guy from Spider-Man. That is a very geeky reference in itself. Now, electro. What do you think of when I say electro? Electricity. 
electricity. So what do you think an electromagnet is? A magnet that uses electricity. A magnet that uses electricity. Okay? So if I have a normal magnet, in fact, um, looks like I don't have my magnet up here today. If I just have a normal magnet, a normal magnet's pretty strong, it would stick to the board, but it's not really going to hold me onto the board. If I jump and hold onto that magnet, the magnet's coming down. Okay? However, an electromagnet, However much electricity I supply to it, the more electricity, the more what kind of energy I'm adding? Uh, potential energy. I'm adding electricity. I'm adding potential energy, which means I can convert it into kinetic energy. And what you'll be talking about in the next couple of lessons is actually using this knowledge of potential energy and kinetic energy to actually design a roller coaster, okay? I love roller coasters. And I really love, there's this. Excuse me, teachers. May I say Jamaica's morning, Laverne and Green, Jamaica and Antoine from Ms. Stevenson's office. Jamaica's morning, Laverne and Green, Jamaica and Antoine from Ms. Stevenson's office. Okay, there's this one roller coaster at Six Flags in Texas, okay? It's a wooden roller coaster. And you sit in the back, and it's going really fast, you will black out and pass out. It's awesome. Okay? But what you're going to do is you're going to design a roller coaster that uses electromagnets. Okay? And we're going to talk about, if we think about the rocket, and we put the magnet far away from the rocket, we didn't get that good of a launch. But the closer we put the rocket to the magnet, the better launch we got, going all the way up to 120 meters per second. You're going to be able to do the same thing with roller coaster. So we're going to start off with our warm-up activity. This is the very first part of lesson 3.5. And we're going to watch a video about electromagnets, okay? Let's first review the questions you'll answer after you see the video. So you're going to have a couple of questions here that you're going to answer, and we're going to kind of talk about them together after you watch the video. So the first question we're going to have to ask is, how are electromagnets similar to other magnets? What does similar mean? The same, alike, okay? Number two, how are electromagnets different from other magnets? So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna compare and contrast regular magnets that you've been talking about for the past couple of weeks, and we're gonna compare them to this brand new thing known as an electromagnet. So again, like we talked about, electromagnet uses electricity. We run the electricity through a small wire, and that wire is going to give us an electromagnetic field, and that electromagnetic field is gonna allow us to um, come together all these holes. So let's pull up this video. We're going to jam out here. Yeah. An electromagnet is a type of magnet that uses an electric current to produce a magnetic field. We can create an electromagnet using simple items such as a battery, some wire, and an iron nail. The electromagnet can get very hot, so don't try to do this activity yourself. First, take the nail and wrap the wire tightly around it. Make sure to wrap the coils in one direction. Connect each end of the wire to the ends of the battery. the batteries of the electromagnet, we can observe that the magnets now attract. 
Switching the batteries reversed the direction of the magnetic field, so the end of the electromagnet that was originally a north pole became a south pole. That's why the two magnets now attract. Electromagnets have a lot in common with bar magnets, but they also have some differences. They can be made stronger or weaker. Their poles can be switched. And they can even be turned off by disconnecting the wires. So now you know how an electromagnet works and how it's different from a bar magnet. Okay, I see a lot of fingers moving. That's awesome. That means you're kind of already starting on the question. So again, we're looking at how are they the same and how are they different? You want to share one of the ones you got? Let me know. What you got, Junior? So is this same or different? First of all, is it same okay. or different? different? Different. Okay, so different. So for electromagnets, you can uh, make them much stronger than before. They can become stronger and what? Weaker. Weaker. Okay, and how did they make them stronger and weaker in the video? By uh, adding batteries. By adding batteries. So stronger, we add batteries. Weaker, we take out batteries. Take out batteries. Okay. Miss Rodriguez, what's something that you got? Um, Same or different? Uh, definitely different. Okay. What'd you get? Um. I haven't tested yet. Well, let's work through the idea together. Okay. It's okay if you haven't typed yet. What What are you thinking about? So wonderful. So if I have a normal magnet, it's always going to be a magnet. A bar magnet's always going to be a magnet. But with electromagnet, I can do what? Turn it off and on. So an electromagnet can be turned on and off. Okay, and that works. So um, if you've ever been to the hospital, you might have gotten what's called an MRI. An MRI is a very, very large machine that they stick you inside of, and it uses an electromagnet to actually take pictures of the inside of your body so doctors can use that to diagnose what's wrong with you, figure out what's wrong with you. Now, that's good because they can turn it on and off because it uses a very, very powerful electromagnetic. If you've ever been inside of it, it goes ka choo ka choo ka choo ka choo It's very loud, okay? But if you have anything metal anywhere, it's going to attach to that machine. Even if it's inside of you, it's going to come out and attach to that machine. So that's why doctors like that they can make sure that you're in your gown, they'll put you into the MRI, they'll say, good luck, and they'll go on the other side of the wall and turn it on, okay? So... Electromagnetics can be turned on and off. Okay? What about the north and south pole? Do both back both magnets have a north and south pole? Yes. Okay. If the one's on, the electromagnet can be switched. Okay. So both have a north and south. But as he just shared, electromagnets can switch their Poles. Eric, did you think of anything else? Did you think of anything else? No? Now, they used a nail in the video. They used a nail in the video. If I go to my kitchen refrigerator, am I going to be able to just connect a nail to the refrigerator? Why? Nail's not what? The nail's not magnetic. But wait a minute. In the video, the nail is picking up paper clips. Why was that? Because uh, the nail was connected to the battery with the wire. 
So we're able to make a nail what? A magnetic by using electricity. So if we think about it, the last different I'm going to add in mine, these electro magnets can be made out of metal. Okay? As long as it's metal, we good. As long as it's metal, I can turn you into an electromagnet. However, I can't want something's turned off, it's no longer a magnet. That's what we talked about stronger and weaker. We can make it stronger and weaker. So by looking at our list, I know some of y'all are typing, it's wonderful. I love hearing all those tapping little fingers. We know that electromagnets and regular magnets have a lot of, they're, they're the same. They're both magnets. But we're starting to look more at their differences here. They don't act the same, okay? If you get on a roller coaster and you want to go as fast as possible, would you rather use a regular magnet or an electromagnet? Electromagnet. electromagnet. We're going to pump that thing up, put a whole bunch of electricity, and say, good luck. All right, I'm going to click hand in. I'm going to go back to my new computer. So, reviewing magnetic force. Today you'll use the simulation to investigate electromagnets. You'll be actually able to move the electromagnets around. You've used this simulation before with our other magnets. Now we're going to add one that you haven't gotten to play with yet, and that's the electromagnet. This will help prepare you for your next assignment as student physicist that's designing the roller coaster. That's what we're building up to. So, I'm going to exit out of this. We're going to go to activity two. In activity two, we are actually going to open the simulation. So first of all, we have an electromagnet. An electromagnet is a type of magnet in which the magnetic field is produced by an electric current. Just like y'all figured out at the beginning of the lesson, electromagnets use electricity. Now, in the video, they did show how to easily make one of these at home. But again, the video did warn you could get hurt doing this. Anytime you're messing with electricity, there's a chance that you could get hurt, okay? So please make sure if you want to do something like this at home, please talk to your parents, have your parents work with you, have your parents contact us about making sure it's done safely. But overall, it's kind of a little dangerous. I would love to do this in the classroom. I would love for y'all to shock each other with magnets and stuff like that, but we're not gonna do that right now. So. I'm going to go on to the simulation. Now, what we're going to be doing in the simulation is we're going to be doing two different setups. Two different setups. Setup one, we're going to put the magnet right here, and this is our electromagnet. Our electromagnet has a lock on it, which means our electromagnet will not move. So what's going to move here? The regular magnet is going to move. And what we're going to do is we're going to see and predict. What does predict mean? Uh, make an educated hypothesis. Make, make, oh, wow, you're supposed to do this. Make an educated hypothesis. Make a lucky guess. Okay, but a lucky guess based on evidence. So we have our magnet, we have our electromagnet. Instead of one, instead of two, we can see they're different. Okay, Miss Birthday Girl, what's different about these two setups? So we have one that's only one, two, three, four, five apart, and this one that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine apart. Okay? You're probably already getting some guesses in your mind about what's going to happen here because we're talking about what kind of energy? P -p Potential energy. So we should see a difference in here because they're different distances. So if we're looking at these two models, which one has more potential energy? The first one. The first one. Why does the first one have more potential energy? Because the magnet is closer to the electromagnet. Because they're closer. Okay? So I'm going to scroll down. It's a little drop down. Which setup will have more potential energy? Setup one. 
And then in which setup will the bar magnet have more kinetic energy when you press run? So which one's going to have more kinetic energy? Uh, the one. Why? Why? Okay. Setup one. The more potential energy it has, the more it's going to be able to convert into kinetic energy. Okay. So, I don't know about y'all. I have a four-year-old and a nine-month-old. And when I'm up all night with my nine-month-old, I don't, I'm not very hyper the next day. I did not get enough sleep. However, when I get a lot of sleep, I'm very hyper, as you've probably seen me in the hallways. Now, my sleep is my potential energy. If I have low sleep, I'll have low kinetic energy the next day. If I have lots of sleep, lots of potential energy, I'll have lots of kinetic energy the next day. It's all about what we can convert. So what we're going to do, it tells us to actually launch, launch it, boom. Please let me know, please let me know if yours does not launch. I'm hoping we've updated the computers today. Hopefully they will launch. Is you're not launching? What I'm going to do is I'm going to put yours to the side. I want you to work with him, okay? So, setup number one. In setup number one, we're going to set it up to look just like this. I'm going to put the electromagnet there. Boom. Oh, my bad. Pick these three little lines right here in the top left hand corner, and we need to choose electromagnets. Okay, once we choose electromagnets in the top left-hand corner, now we have the ability. And we're going to do electromagnet A, and I'm going to take this. I think I'm going to have to use the computer. I'm going to use the computer, yeah. All right. I'm going to take this magnet. I'm going to drag it. I'm going to put it right there. And then it wants us to lock it into place. So I'm going to take this lock, and I'm going to drag it. I'm going to put it right there. So my electromagnet is now locked in place. And then I'm going to place my bar magnet. My bar magnet's right here. It's weak. And I'm going to, gotta use the computer. I'm going to place it five away from the electromagnet. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Put electromagnets. Boom. Put our first one. Lock it into place. And then do one, two, three, four, five. Anybody else? You have some issues? Yeah. So I want you to follow along with me on the board for now. And we'll kind of do the discussion. So we're going to make sure we go back to build. We're going to keep yours right there for just a second, okay? All right. The last thing I want to do is I want to turn on field lines, which is this toggle right here at the top. And I'm able to see these field lines. Something I could probably share with you in the next couple of days is talking about the Oreo Borealis, which is the northern lights. And it all happens because of field lines around Earth rather than just magnets. So, first of all, I'm going to go look at my questions here. First thing it wants us to do is it wants to know how much potential energy is being used. So who can tell me how much potential energy we're using right now? Uh, 907.4. Okay, 907.4. Then it has a J. Does anybody know what this J stands for? It stands for joules. Joules is how much, how we usually measure energy, okay? So setup one, we're starting off with 907.4 joules. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I thought I fixed this because this is an issue we were having at first, uh, previous. Um, I'm going to get you on the simulation. You just work on the simulation with us. It's okay if you do it with the board, okay? So I have the same joules. Okay. We had this issue, I thought I fixed it. Or something. You didn't fix it. If you're in a different group, it's fine. 
hey, you're in a different color group. I thought I put everybody in the same group. Apparently, it's, that's what's messing up. It's not the same group. If you're in the same group as me, which is blue group, just stay with me and put your answers there. If you're not in the blue group, then don't worry about it, okay? Just do the activity with me so that you can see what we're seeing on the screen. Now, I'm going to run it. I'm going to run my model now. I have my magnet. I have my electromagnet. And I'm going to run it. So there goes my magnet. And it's gone. Now, my potential energy has decreased. Why has my potential energy decreased? Because the potential energy is being transferred into the kinetic energy. Okay. But I'm no longer moving. So should my potential energy go back up? Yeah. Once you move, the potential energy is going to go back up because there was no more like movement going back up. Right. If you go back, then you have something that goes. You're doing good. You're doing good. So my magnet was here. I have high potential energy. Now it's all the way over here, and I have low potential energy. It moved. It's further away from the electromagnet. It doesn't have as much stored as uh, energy. Now, if I go look at analyze, <coughs> excuse me. If I go back in time, I'm going to go back in time for my magnet all the way back. I can see that I have 907 joules of potential energy. And then what I should see is like we talked about my potential energy turning into kinetic energy. And sure enough, as I run the simulation and that magnet starts moving, sure enough, I have kinetic energy start showing up. Forty-seven, forty-seven, forty-seven. Okay, so I now have forty-seven joules of kinetic energy. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to put forty-seven joules. Now it wants us to do setup two. Setup two has the magnet a little bit further away. So I'm going to go to build, and I'm going to change my magnets. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay? I've moved it further away. My potential energy did what? Decreased because I'm further away from the electromagnet. So I'm going to change in my simulation to, what was it? 870.3 joules. Now, because I'm starting off with less potential energy, ultimately I should have what kind of kinetic energy? Oh, less. Less kinetic energy. The whole system, the system is everything working together. The whole system's decreasing. So let's see if our hypothesis is correct. We should have less kinetic energy. I'm going to click run. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Well, that was fun. I'm going to go to analyze. Go back in time. Okay. I started off with less potential energy at 870. And then. How do, did it move fast or slow? Slower than the last one. Did it move slower than the last one? And as I keep watching my system, what's the highest number I get up to? 10. Mine only goes up to 7. You only get up to 7? So that means you started your magnet off what? A bit further. A bit further than what I did. That's fine. So I only get 10 joules. Because I started with less potential energy, I ended up with less kinetic energy. Now, this isn't part of the simulation, it's just a question. If I take this magnet and I put this magnet right there, what should I see? Fast or slow? Fast. Fast. I can already see I have 1,720 joules of potential energy. So it's going to move fast? Yes. With how much kinetic energy? Um, a lot. Zero. Zero kinetic energy? A lot. <laughs> a lot. Well, look, when I was.
was at 907, I made it all the way up to 47. Do you think it's going to go higher than 47? Yes. Just for fun, let's see. Boom! It's gone. 